Welcome back to the channel guys. Now a few things to note about the Inmotion P6 crash test. But first, let's give a great shout out to the Inmotion team and fellow EUC riders for performing this crushing test. How do you think the, uh, the kickstand and back handle will take it? I was just thinking the same thing. Three. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Kickstand's gone. Yeah. Hello. That's just plastic. It's all right? plastic, yeah. Threads. Oh, I pulled the threads out. Not too bad on this. Also, a big shout out to Inmotion for the transparency and behind the scenes after the crash insights. Rick? I think so. It sounded like it. Yeah. Yep. I see a crack. I think it chunked the concrete. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh, backwards. Chunked. Yeah. Hey, look at all the holes in the concrete now. It's uh, electronically fine. Now, with that said, I think the crash test was mostly positive in the way it was performed. And while the experiment demonstrated a lot of information and clarity about such a wheel and its build quality, we can make some jarring assessments. Now, number one, the crash test on the street was mid-level. I was expecting a crash test at speeds that's more practical. It's unlikely that we will see crashes at such low speeds. Remember, this wheel is set to do around 90 miles per hour. So even a modest speed of 40 miles per hour would have been closer to reality than pushing it into a wall by hand. Now, I doubt the wheel even hit 20 miles per hour before slamming into the wall or the pavement. In either case, this was a great crash test, but I wouldn't rely on this method to determine the wheel's overall durability. If anything, this test, the pavement test that is, demonstrated the wheel might not be able to withstand a similar crash at 40 miles per hour, which is more reasonable to expect. In most crashes I've been able to accumulate, both from Facebook and YouTube, riders tend to crash their wheels in brutal fashion on a straightaway with very little to almost no impact on the wall and while off-roading due to massive jumps. So while the pavement crash test appeared brutal, I give it a six out of 10 for effectiveness. This test was more than anything we've seen close up of any other wheel except for that time Bigode threw their wheel down a mountain. A very important observation is that the rim was significantly damaged in just the first few crashes due to curb impact. And the damage overall came from merely pushing the wheel by hand. Now imagine what catastrophic damage would have happened at a much higher rate of speed. So yeah, for the pavement, a strong C+. Number two, the stairs crash test. This test was definitely a strong test of durability. Not only was it pushed down the stairs several times after repeated pavement crashes, but the P6 managed to mostly remain intact. What's even more surprising than the rim being bent by merely pushing it on the pavement test is that the pedals appear to be a lot more tougher than I expected, given that the full weight of the P6 was placed on them after repeated tumbles. At one point, it appeared as if the pedals broke off, but it was just the top part of the pedal and the overall rigidity remained intact. And as we noticed, the rider was able to continue riding afterwards. Also, more than the pavement crash test, this test demonstrated that the P6 is designed in such a way that the body seems to either absorb proper impact while at the same time avoiding the destruction of critical components like the screen for example. While the screen was blurred out several times, no one made mention of it during the process. Which leads me to think the surrounding edges of the plastic piece that holds the screen was indeed intentional and functional, not just for looks. Out of both crash tests, between the pavement test and the stairs, the stairs demonstrated a higher level of endurance in terms of build quality and engineering. I give this test an A+. Number 3. Finally, the rideability test. After ensuing a subpar pavement test and a grueling stairs test, both tests combined demonstrate one thing about the P6. The engineering that went into making the P6, from the electronics, the selection of materials, the placement of various components, all seem to have been well thought out to make this wheel as durable as possible given what riders like to do. One of which is bombing down stairs. You can be sure that if your wheel crashed down a flight of concrete stairs, it will most likely still work enough to carry your broken carcass home, albeit in many pieces. The lights did not break, the handlebar maintained for the most part, the rim not so much, although it did not crack but did bend, the charging port came apart, the pedal and pedal hangers were bulletproof, the shell absorbed a lot of these impacts, 
which is essential for keeping internal electronics and components in place and shock resistant. I think what this demonstrates is that even without any aftermarket fairings or protection, the P6 will withstand practically anything the average rider might throw at it out of the box, except scratches of course. I give the rideability an A+, because in the end, you still need to get back home. So the overall score for the P6 durability plus rideability test is 6 plus 10 plus 10 divided by 3 equals 8.6, which is a strong B. Great work guys, the P6 looks promising indeed. Check out the original video for the full crash test, insights and immediate reactions. And let me know what you guys think in the comments. Are you more or less interested in the P6 after this test? Thanks for watching guys. Do you, like from the damages that we've seen today, do you think that they're going to implement any changes from today's testing? Or do you think that everything that we've seen- I don't think I seen... can say that. I don't think I can answer that question. My me, assumption is they're gonna they're analyze they're it doing... and whether or not it's worth the change needs to be analyzed. Mm because there's trade-offs, mm. right? So like, for example, let's say they use thicker threads or stronger, bigger screws or something, you know? Then that would just moves the weakest link to somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then where does it move to? It's hard to kind of guess, you know? Yeah. And like, from, especially from our point of view, like we don't have the, the FE analysis. We don't have the whole structural design. Yeah. So like, I can't, I, I can't envision where that would move to. Does that make right, sense? Right, right, yeah, yeah. No, it makes sense. But it was still rideable. That's so, my criteria. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. As yeah. long as you're not less stranded, you need to call an Uber or get out of the forest or whatever. As long as you can get home, I think that's the most critical part of it. Yeah, yeah. I agree.